discuss in detail formation, transport and disposal of ammonia. So the first, first part is formation of ammonia. In formation of ammonia, you have to write about role of transamination and deamination reaction in the formation of ammonia. So the first step in the catabolism of amino acid is to remove the amino group as ammonia. And this is the major source of ammonia. Small quantities of ammonia is also formed from the catabolism of purine and pyrimidine bases. Ammonia it is a highly toxic compound and it has to be converted into a non-toxic form and non-toxic form that is urea and this urea it is excreted through urine. So these are the sources of ammonia that is glutamic acid, deamination reaction, amino sugars, catabolism of pyrimidine, glutamine, asparagin all these are the sources of ammonia and this toxic ammonia it is converted into a non-toxic compound that is urea and it is excreted through urine. So as we said in the formation part you have to write about the role of transamination and deamination reaction. So first one is transamination that is it is the exchange of alpha amino group between one alpha amino acid and another alpha keto acid forming a new alpha amino acid and a new keto acid. So the group of enzyme catalyzing this transamination reaction is called as transaminases or aminotransferases. And this transaminases they require pyridoxal phosphate as the coenzyme and give an example here that is from alanine the amino group it is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate and alpha ketoglutarate becomes glutamate. This reaction it is catalyzed by alanine aminotransferase and the coenzyme is pyridoxal phosphate. In almost all cases the amino group it is accepted by alpha ketoglutarate so that glutamic acid is formed and as we said the enzyme catalyzing the reaction as a group is known as trans amino transferases or transaminases and the, these enzymes have pyridoxal, pho pyridoxal phosphate as coenzyme. So the amino group of most of the amino acid it is released by a coupled reaction that is transdeamination. Transamination is followed by oxidative deamination. Transamination reaction it takes place in all tissues and deamination it occurs only in the liver. By transamination the amino group is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate and glutamic acid is formed and this glutamic acid it is carried to liver where the deamination takes place. In liver an enzyme is present glutamate dehydrogenase. This enzyme is present only in the liver mitochondria. It will deaminate glutamate to alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia. So from by transamination reaction the amino group from any amino acid it is transferred to alpha ketoglutarate so that glutamate is formed. This reaction takes place in all tissues. Now this glutamate it is transported from the tissues to the liver. Liver mitochondria has an enzyme glutamate dehydrogenase. So glutamate dehydrogenase enzyme will oxidatively deaminate glutamate and forms alpha ketoglutarate and ammonia. The non-oxidative deamination it is catalyzed by dehydratase. Examples are serine is converted to pyruvate by the enzyme serine dehydratase. And similarly, threonine is converted to alpha ketoglutric acid by the enzyme threonine dehydratase. That is, the alpha amino groups of serine and threonine can be directly deaminated into ammonia without first being transferred to alpha ketoglutrate. That is, the presence of hydroxyl group attached to the alpha carbon atom in each of these amino acids. These are hydroxy amino acid. So, the presence of hydroxyl group attached to the alpha carbon atom in each of these amino acid will permit the deamination. As we said, ammonia is a toxic compound. It should be eliminated or detoxified when it is formed. Even very minute quantity of ammonia may produce toxicity in the central nervous system. But this ammonia it is always produced by almost all cells including the neurons. So the intracellular ammonia it is immediately trapped by glutamic acid to form glutamine, especially in the brain cell. 
then this glutamine it is transported to liver where the reaction is reversed by another enzyme glutamine ammonia is immediately trapped by glutamic acid to form glutamine and this glutamine it is transported to liver where the reaction is reversed by an enzyme glutaminase the ammonia so formed is immediately detoxified into urea inside the cells of almost all tissue the transamination reaction of transamination reaction will produce glutamic acid but glutamine dehydrogenase it is available only in the liver so the final deamination and production of ammonia is taking place in the liver glutamine it is the transport form of ammonia from brain and intestine to the liver and alanin is the transport form from the muscle to liver the biosynthesis of urea begins with condensation of carbon dioxide ammonia and atp to form carbamyl phosphate that is one molecule of ammonia condensed with carbon dioxide in the presence of two molecules of atp to form carbamyl phosphate and the reaction is catalyzed by mitochondrial enzyme carbamyl phosphate synthetase and this is the rate limiting step of urea formation second one is the formation of citrulline this reaction is also mitochondrial that is the carbamyl group is transferred to the amino group of ornithine by ornithine transcarbamylase now the citrulline formed it will leave the mitochondria and further reactions are taking place in the cytoplasm third step is the formation of arginosuccinate one molecule of aspartic acid is added to citrulline forming a carbon nitrogen bond which will provide the second nitrogen atom of urea this reaction it is catalyzed by arginosuccinate synthetase this reaction also needs hydrolysis of atp to amp so two high energy phosphate bonds are utilized here fourth step is the formation of arginine that is arginosuccinate it is cleaved by an enzyme arginosuccinate lyase to form arginine and fumarate and the last step is the formation of urea that is this is the final reaction of the cycle that is hydrolysis of arginine to urea and ornithine by the enzyme arginase now ornithine it will return to mitochondria to react with another molecule of carbamyl phosphate so that the cycle is repeat so you can see in the fourth step that is arginosuccinate it is cleaved to arginine and fumarate this fumarate it enters into the tca cycle and it is converted to malate and then to oxaloacetate and this oxaloacetate it is transaminated to aspartate and this is the link between the urea cycle and tca cycle so the overall reaction of urea cycle can be summarized as ammonia plus carbon dioxide plus aspartate gives urea and fumarate so in the urea cycle two atps are used in the first reaction and another atp is converted to amp which is equal to two atps so urea cycle totally it consumes four high energy phosphate bond but fumarate formed in the fourth step it is converted to malate malate when it is oxidized to oxaloacetate it will produce one nadh which is equal to 2.5 atp so urea cycle consumes four high energy phosphate bond and it produces 2.5 atp so net energy expenditure is only about 1.5 high energy phosphate regulation of urea cycle include coarse regulation and fine regulation coarse regulation during starvation the activity of urea cycle enzyme is elevated to meet the increased rate of protein catabolism and in fine regulation the major regulatory enzyme that is carbamyl phosphate synthetase it is stimulated by n acetyl glutamate the urea cycle enzymes they are located in such a way that the first two enzymes are in the mitochondrial matrix and the remaining in the cytoplasm so the inhibitory effect of fumarate on its own formation is minimized because arginosuccinate lyase is in the cytoplasm and fumarase it is in the mitochondria